Good Saturday morning, everybody. I have been sitting on this one for a minute. The Scarlet Pumpernickel. Now, you would you would think with me saying something like that, that uh, for sure this is just a regular old run-of-the-mill commentary, but no. This one was requested. This was requested by a couple of you, but uh, the only person that knows of those who requested this how to do it properly... A gentleman by the name of Super Mikey four four fifty five. Super Mikey sent it to ltcommentary at gmail dot com, and that is how you get your commentaries honored. You could you could learn a thing or two from uh, Super Mikey four five five. You could. I used this cartoon, by the way, for many years as proof positive that. Uh, Daffy's a dumbass. <laughs> I said for many years that Daffy is a his middle name is Dumas because of this one. That's the uh, that that can be a problem uh, for for Looney Tunes fans that that are of a young age uh, because of episodic television and, uh, and anime and and all this stuff. Sometimes you guys tend to forget that there is no continuity when jokes are concerned. There is no continuity where jokes are concerned. By the way, that... Um, I forget her name. What is her name? But uh, anyway, that's B. Benaderet uh, doing that, that. The fair Melissa. The fair Melissa's voice. Henry Hawk. One of the few times that uh, Chuck Jones uh, directed... A cartoon with Henry Hawk in it, which is sort of ironic because, and not a lot of people know this, but Chuck actually created Henry Hawk. He's uh, he's thought of as being uh, a McKimson character because uh, McKimson used him to great effect in the uh, the Foghorn Leghorn cartoons. But uh, the first the first appearance ever of Henry was in in, uh, in a Chuck cartoon. And also, this is uh, not Mel, or this is not uh, Arthur Key Bryan doing uh, Elmer here. I'm a Dover coach. How's your cuisine and your good wife, my foul churl of a pheasant? A pheasant? Oh, Mr. Nobleman, you honor my humble lodgings. Yes, they are humble, aren't they? Yeah, that's that's Mel Blank. That's the first time that uh, Mel ever did uh, did Elmer's voice. What a great drawing. What a great drawing. Chuck is um, not as uh, not as experimental in his drawing style at this point. He gets a little more. He gets a lot more actually experimental towards the end of the fifties. But uh, man, what a great! He's he's gotten pretty really good at this point with expressions, you know, and putting putting all the acting in uh, into the per, into the performances of the, the expressions of the characters. I had a lot of fun with this uh, this segment here last year when I made the uh, five non-WB Mel Blanc Looney Tunes performances because I'd seen this cartoon for years and always wanted to uh, re- you know, re-pitch the voices so that it sounded like Mel was talking to Mel you know, like Daffy pitched talking to Sylvester pitched and vice versa and I was very happy I was happily surprised to find that even when you you take the pitch from both performances and you make them the same, it's not the same performance because once again, Mel Blanc is not a voice actor. He's an actor that did voices. So, I love that horse. Chuck was apparently a big fan of uh, chubby horses. I mean, there's a, a weird, speaking as a fat man, there's a weird gracefulness to uh, to, to chubby things. That have to move quickly. You know, if you don't believe me, I got two words for that. Chris Farley. But this cartoon, like, like I said, I, uh, this cartoon was... Um, I've been waiting on this one for a little while. Because, you know, you can't just do all the, the, the best cartoons first. Because then you're going to be left with, you know, like a couple years of just nothing but the bad stuff. But, uh, you know... Josh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Super Mikey 455 requested it. But yeah, this is B. 
B. Benadaret, and I think this is one of the first occasions, first times where there's more than three of uh, the Looney Tunes characters, the stable of characters, because they've you got Daffy, Elmer, Porky, Sylvester, Mama Bear's in it. Um, I think that's it. You know, Melissa right there, but she's she's only I think she's only in this cartoon. But uh, yeah, you you really can't put too many, and I like the you really can't put too many WB characters together in the plot because you know they don't uh, they're they're self serving characters very often. But in this, it makes sense because Daffy's making a movie and he's you know directing it. I guess I guess that might be uh, oh my god! I almost just credited filmation with being with <laughs> doing something logically uh, with uh, Daffy Duck and Porky Big Meet the Groovy Ghoulies because that's about Daffy making a movie but it's not as though anyone who worked at Filmation you know would have would have thought to do it the right way or if they if they did think to do it the right way they were quickly told no we don't do that it's Filmation <laughs> oh man this is such a great cartoon and they probably uh, they probably censored this too I'm sure right yeah a lot of them a lot of them cut that that thing out at the end I don't know how you get around that but anyway folks that's it for this week see you next week